Good evening. This is a video for Kyle Veach. Veach? Kyle, sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. But uh, Kyle's a friend over on Google Plus, and he just picked up a drill press quite similar to this one. I think his is a touch newer. Um, well, his is used, but uh, newer than this. I actually bought this new many years ago. This has got to be going on uh, probably about 12, 13 years old, something like that. But um, regardless, Kai was asking about a fence. So I wanted to just make this quick video about the cheap and dirty um, table fence combination I use. It's nothing fancy, nothing really to write home about. Um, it gets the job done. It leaves a little bit to be desired, certainly, but it does what I need it to do. This is actually the second one I've made. Um, <clears throat> the first one just kind of got worn out. So I remade it. I managed to make it in an afternoon, which is saying a lot for me. I tend not to get things finished that quickly, even if they're simple projects. But um, here we go. It's made out of uh, three quarter inch OSB. Nothing too fancy. Got a, a fence in the back, the main table. And if we come down here, see there's another piece. In this case, it's a scrap of three quarter inch plywood. Um, could be OSB. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the sheet goods are great because they're nice flat and I find the OSB tends to be even flatter than the plywood unless you're going with really fancy plywood but I've even had good plywood bow on me so I like the OSB. Um, down here what I've got are um, carriage bolts with just wing nuts and a washer and there's two of them and the carriage bolt is countersunk into this piece of plywood that's what this plywood is for and you loosen them up and they allow the whole thing with the fence and all to move around up and forth. It it doesn't need to be perpendicular or parallel with anything because it's just the drill. So I can twist it, don't really need to, but I can bring it in and out where I have to. And I just twist these and it locks down. And that's in these two long slots that are in the factory table. Ugh. Now you see in the corner, I've got this notch out. That's so that I can move the table up and down. Um, when I built the first one, I realized it was hitting there and I had to take it off and cut it. Uh, since this is my second one, I built it with this notch. And that notch lets me bring it all the way back and still turn this. It's it's locked over there, so I'm not going to turn it, but I can, well, I guess I can turn it. Um, and if I slide that, I'm just loosening the nuts, the wing nuts, bring it back. See, I can still, I can still turn this. So that's what that missing notch is for. Um, the fence itself is just some pocket screws hold it in you know the cuts are square so the pocket screws hold it down there's probably a bit of glue in there i honestly don't even remember but um they hold it down just fine uh let's take a look let's see eh, it's good enough for government work i mean it's not perfect you can just see the slightest bit of light through there but it's pretty close um, and I'm typically not drilling, you know, big, long vertical things. So I think that's fine. And one other thing is I've got this little, this little recess down here. If you can see that, that's just a saw kerf. And what that does is that's just a space for sawdust to go so that if there's sawdust built up on the table and I take a piece and I push it against the fence, this way the sawdust gets into that little recess rather than getting stuck between the workpiece and the fence and keeping it off or cocked or, or um, out of where I want it to work. So that uh, that's really it in a nutshell. Here's some short little screws. These are br little brass screws that hold this to that sub base of plywood. And that's about it. I got a hole here from over drilling and you see these stains. That's from working on plywood derby cars. I'm wet sanding when... Um, Axles are stuck in here, so it gets a little wet and metal, but it doesn't really matter because when this wears out, I'll make another one. Um, it's a very simple table. For this drill press, I don't know that I'll ever upgrade from this thing. Um, I suppose I may go into some project where my drilling needs to be so dead on perfect that this table is no longer enough or build some repetitive process. I mean, the, the big one, the big aftermarket drill press table that Woodpeckers makes is very nice, but I think for what I use my drill press for and for this drill press, it would be complete overkill, especially considering the fact that the drill press, I, I pulled it up onto the bench right now to sh shoot this. Normally, 
it lives over in that corner. Um, it doesn't get used that much, and I don't have the space to leave it up on a counter all the time. So I'm not going to go with a bigger table. I'm, I'm really locked into a table of that size. So that is my drill press table. Very quick to make. I would, uh, if you don't have one on your drill press, I would highly recommend it. It can be done cheap in an afternoon, and um, and you'll see a big improvement in in the drill press using this. And I I clamp stop blocks to this back fence all the time. I set it to set a distance off an edge, and I can flip pieces over. It it makes the drill press. It adds a lot of utility to the drill press having a work surface and a, and a fence like that. So. If you got a drill press, I highly recommend you make something like this. Any questions about it, just let me know and get back.